With the fast-growing popularity of extreme long-range shooting, many new scope models have incorporated exposed, easily adjustable non-locking turrets with zero stops. While this is useful for engaging targets at changing distances, for some competitive shooters and many hunters, having an exposed unlock windage turret can be exceptionally annoying. When your windage can be nudged and adjusted by accident when picking up your rifle by the scope or resting your hand as you're adjusting your elevation turret. And that's why there's the Midas Tac, an ELR-centric scope with a capped windage turret. No brainer. And we're going to take a look at one and test it out on this episode of Moondog Industries. This is the Athlon Midas Tac HD, and I want to thank Athlon for sending this out for evaluation and testing. And this is in their new digital camo packaging design. You can see here it is a cardboard box. And, of course, let's see what's inside, because that's the most important thing here. We have our scope. We've got plentiful padding on the inside to protect it. What else do we have in here? We have a set of uh, set screws and a small Allen wrench and a microfiber cleaning cloth. We have a user manual for all of the different magnification ranges of their Midas Tac, the 4 to 16, the 5 to 25, and the 6 to 24. And always read your user manual. It tells you everything you need to know, especially about your reticle and how to use it properly. All right, and let's take a look at the scope itself here. Let me throw up some specs. Now we can see here that this is a kind of a hybrid hunting and long range shooting uh, design with capped turrets for your windage and exposed turret for your elevation here. And we have uh, a parallax focus without illumination. Uh, it goes down to 10 yards all the way up to infinity. And this turns butter smooth. Oh, nice. But let's take a look at these turrets here. This is the uh, mill version, the mill rad version. And we can see the numbers are clearly printed on the turret and we can see uh, a uh, gauge on the bottom here to see how many turns you've put on to your turret. And let's just listen to those turrets. Nice. This is what Athlon's known for. Pretty, pretty darn loud turrets with uh, good tactile positivity. And uh, these are resettable. Um, you just take a coin or a screwdriver. And let me just, oh, this is, this is on tight. There we go. You just unscrew this screw on the top and you can pop off the turret and it is there is a zero stop. This is a nice brass zero stop and that's what those set screws were for and that Allen wrench. And you can set uh, your zero stop here and it, it stops right on this, uh, this brass tab here. So it is a nice high quality zero stop on these Athlons now instead of uh, uh, washers like um, older style zero stops. And let's take a look at this windage. Now this is uh, capped so that's good for you hunters out there because you can't accidentally uh, knock your windage off from its zero and that is a nice tactile positive and loud turret clicks there and again this is resettable as well and you can just quickly cap that off once you have your zero set up and let's take a look at this magnification dial this wheel here nice and smooth that is butter smooth it goes from 624 and a about a 180 throw with a little nub there so that makes it easier to turn in cold weather or with gloves and our ocular or reticle focus very, very smooth. All right. As you can see, Athlon did a great job with this scope. But of course, the proof is in the pudding, or in this case, the glass. So let's take it outdoors and check it out. 
We're looking at the peak of Mount Davidson, approximately 1,300 yards away, and we've got the scope set its lowest power setting of six, so we can get a, a, the best sense of overall image quality through the scope itself. And you can see the difference here in terms of uh, the quality of the sky, uh, the brightness, the color saturation and the tint versus inside of the scope. And there is a little bit of color shift, but overall brightness is pretty darn good. Uh, as we move it up to its highest power setting of 24, I'm not noticing any significant point of aim shift. Uh, we've kept focus as well as eye relief, so that's very good. And uh, we can see a little bit of loss of, of uh, color, saturation, and contrast, but it is still a pretty bright image. And we are we can clearly make out the trail marker sign at the top of the hill there. That is a five, six foot tall sign with a 36 inch steel uh, sign on top of it, um, which is a good proxy for a steel target from this distance. Now let's take a look at the scope at the range. I'm going to set up some reference targets at 100 yards and we'll walk back over to the benches and take a look at it through the scope. And while I do that, I'd just like to ask you a favor. Take a second and click those like and subscribe buttons. It's absolutely free and it helps this channel grow, but it also helps you out because you're taking control of the algorithm and letting it know what kind of content you actually enjoy watching. So it'll suggest more videos like this instead of whatever is the most popular video on social media, unless you're really into cat videos. All right, I've got the scope set up and we're looking at some reference targets 100 yards downrange. We're looking at it at its lowest power setting of six, and we're going to see what kind of range of adjustments we have. Let's start with our elevation. And that darkening is just totally the, uh, the mount on this camera. So that's the top. And that is our bottom. Okay, and let's take a look at their windage. Okay, and that's our range to the right. And that's our range of adjustments to the left. Let's bring this back to zero again. Now, let's zoom up to our maximum. All right, let's do our box test. We're going to do a full rotation on the elevation and a full rotation on the windage. Whoops, I think that is as far as it'll go. And going back on the elevation, and going back. All right, we're back. So I passed the box test. All right, let's do our nipple twister test, coined by my buddy Cyclops Joe. And we're back on zero, so we passed the nipple twister test. All right, let's move this down and get a clearer picture of our reference targets there. Okay, I've taken a digital still image from the video so that we can look at these reference targets in detail and not have to deal with heat shimmer or anything else. So from what I can see, the overall color is good based on the color chart on the bottom right there, but there is some chromatic aberration noticeable. You can see some purple fringing at the bottom of the target frame there, as well as uh, near the very top edge of the image. So that's a little disappointing. But overall, the image is pretty sharp uh, evenly from the center out to the outer edge, so that is a good sign. 
Now looking in terms of, of uh, fine detail, I can make out the bullet holes on the sticker target on the uh, paper target on the left, and more importantly, I can make out 22 caliber holes below that sticker target as well as a second hole near the bottom edge of the paper and a lot of less expensive lower quality scopes just you can't make those those tiny little 22 holes out and in terms of pure sharpness if we look at the US Air Force optical resolution chart on the right I can make out both horizontal and vertical lines down to element 4 in this image of uh, group negative 1 and uh, through my naked eye down to group five and that is really good so there you go, the Athlon Midas TAC HD. It's got sharp, bright glass, nice turrets, a fully transferable lifetime warranty, all for a street price of about $650. The only thing it's missing, perhaps, is an illuminated reticle, which for some hunters may be a deal breaker, but for the vast majority of range shooters is something they'll probably never ever use. Or maybe you do. Let me know in the comments if you use the illuminated reticle in your scope. So if you want to pick up a Midas TAC HD, you can find product links in my full written review at MoondogIndustries.com and there's a link to that in the video description. Please use those links, it's a free way to support this channel and another free way is to simply click the like and subscribe buttons. Thanks again for watching. Moondog, out. Hey, if you enjoyed this video, please share it on forums, Facebook, Reddit, TikTok, Instagram, Twitter, MeWe, whatever social media you're on. And if you want to see all of my videos, check out MoondogIndustries.com.